So, uh, hey guys, this is Sarn Productions, aka number 4673, and I am not supposed to be awake right now. I really, um, I'm not. <laughs> but I am. And, uh, I'm excited for Queen at Arms. So I'll continue. <laughs> yes, sir, I reorganized the scouting, scouting party with a few men to stay behind with the wounded. Good. Do that. I gotta find voices. They are two alike, but I just... <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll come up with it along this video, I think. <laughs> it took the soldier a few minutes to round up the scouting party into a semblance of the unit again, but most were eager to get out of here with... Uh, which sped things along. Sure it did. The rest of the scouting... Uh, operation passed without incident. The location was secure and decent enough as a supply dump, though Sat Silgard was aware of it, which would be a problem. Still deciding the tactical necessi necessity of this wasn't our job, so we returned to, our report, to report our findings. I awoke to find uh, Commander Bruce in my tent, which jolted me awake. Commander Bruce, what can I do for you? Relax, I'm only here to report on, uh, I'm only here for your report on what happened in the ruins, Cardale. I thought this might have been more convenient for you, seeing that it was, according to everyone involved, involved quite the ordeal. I just wanted to hear it in your own words, and I'll let you get back to recovering. Oh, uh, there was a strange creature in the ruins of the town, a huge black bear, taller than two buildings stacked together. He was an enemy Magnus. Magus. He fled the scene. Nick and I tried to go after him, but we couldn't catch him. Your brother, to my eternal dismay, is no leader. What? I have been putting some serious consideration into promoting you into his position. Me? You weren't able to rally the troops yesterday because they lack confidence you in you. That needs to change if you expect to survive in the next few days. Think about it. Commander Bruce then paused and averted his eyes before looking back at me with burning curiosity. Tell me more about this monster. As I described it to him, Commander Bruce listened with more and more interest. When I mentioned the other magus we saw, however, it is when he was truly peaked. Yes, the other magus. Do you think he's as powerful as Odin? It's hard to say. It's hard to say. I've seen ours manipulate the elements themselves. This one seems to prefer trickery, trickery and illusions. Hmm, you're right. The enemy Magus does sound like a coward. Well then, I will let you rest more. Be sure to consider my proposal. If I get the choice, I'm gonna say no. <laughs> Just as suddenly as Commander Bruce left, he entered. He left. We were taking uh, a rest from the marching today, and the camp was bustling with activity. It was just going to be a long day. It's morning, what should I do? Study magic. Rubus had told me to meet him in, in his tent today. It had sounded important. Plus, it wouldn't hurt to see if I could get some ma more magical backup from when, for when we were attacked again. Especially with the enemy having their own magic. It felt so wrong to kill Paul Silgard, the enemy, but what else could I do? They thought of us that way after all, and if I started calling them brothers, I wouldn't be able to. I paused in my steps. Everything has been happening so quickly. I've, I've never had to, uh, time to think about who we were fighting for. Just that we were. They would kill us if we didn't. There was no doubt of that in my mind, and it was so easy to think of them as monsters for it. But we had all seen a real monster in the last battle. One of the mind, perhaps, but it felt real enough. The Ophrian army was huge. We have resources and, resources and strength, not to mention most of their own good men were forced onto this side. While the monster had been terrifying, I had to admit, it was also very clever. I told you to meet me inside my tent. tent. You may be in camp, but this is not the best place to become lost in thought. The sudden voice made me jump and then gripped my teeth in annoyance especially when you continue walking while doing so. I wanted to smack the smoke from his face, but I refrained. 
We're all a little testy these days, and he was obviously covering uh, his emotions with a sardonic tone. Being confident and snide was probably better for him than showing his nerves. I didn't exactly have that luxury. One would have thought you'd grown used to speaking by now. You're properly in command. My eyes widened. Was my brother's incompetence that obvious? To him, perhaps. Don't tell me you're too dense to realize it. I paused, not really wanting to admit I'd known, but also not wanting to come off as an idiot for not being able to see it. The Ar Archmagus smirk grew caustic. There are dozens of men here with more intelligence, charisma, and experience than both of you, he sighed. I suppose your name was bound to carry you in a position of power, however. It's only too bad it will also bring us to our deaths. Well, the man's uh, words uh, tend to be biting. I've not known them to be vicious until now. Something was obviously wrong. Are you okay? I asked that without really thinking, but the look of surprise brought to his face brought a pleased smile on mine. Why would you ask that? Of course I'm okay. Were I not so, I would not be having this conversation with you. His uh, tone was assured of this, but his eyes were not. In such a form. It's such a foreign concept for him that someone would be able to see his a through his ascetic facade. I was rather proud of myself. The smug grin on my face was a bit pretty evident that I didn't believe it. The man deflated only a little. I need to gather regents and wished uh, to request a guard. I nodded and looked around for any free soldiers. However, I will only leave the best defender, seeing as you hold the title. I did that is obviously you. While I haven't been uh, aware of Best Defender being part of my job description, I wasn't going to turn man down the man's request. Something about our last battle must have jarred him, and we needed to get him past that quickly. I nodded and followed the Archmagus into the woods. At first we just walked in silence. Occasionally he would stop to gather some plants and stuff them into one of the many pouches he had with him, but he was almost uncharacteristically silent about it. What are these for? In hopes of getting him talking about magic, it would make it easier to broach into other topics. Like why he was so rattled. If we were to be marching through ice and snow, um, it would serve us well to hold the dominion over it. Do you mean magic that controls ice? Of course. Um, when it comes to these choices, I save scum. Do you mean magic that controls ice? I thought we were here to talk about the Magus Adamus. Okay. Do you mean... I don't want to sound stupid. Okay. I don't know which one. I don't know which one. How do you know which one? Um... I... I'm patient. Control isn't the word I would use. Ice magic sounds useful. Would you mind showing me? The Archmag who stopped what he was doing and looked at me. You've shown an aptitude before. Ice and fire are similar enough to one another in getting them to do a task. However, ice is not as quick as its brother. You must speak more slowly to ice for, to ice for it to understand. Fire and ice are brothers? Brother is the closest word to their relationship as I have, I, as I have found in your tongue. You use it outside the rigid fam familial context, do you? Not, not, so, ah. I nodded, but he wasn't looking at me. Communicating with the most primal element, element is the first mastery for any maggot. Once you have learned to do this, you will be able to teach yourself how to speak with the world around you. I nodded again. The arch maggot stopped in front of a hollow stump. He spoke again, but the words sounded strange, and I couldn't seem to remember them after they were uttered. He was casting a spell. The stump suddenly filled with water, as though something were pouring from in, it in from a pitcher. The Archmagus gestured for me to step next to him, so I did. He slipped behind me and wrapped his arms around, taking mine by the wrists. I was unnerved by being so close to the man, but he didn't have the same forms. He smelled of exotic spices, and his skin was so warm, despite not, stopped not wearing much at all. I was distracted by him that I didn't notice he moved my arms about. Now you do the same. I paused, rather embarrassed that I hadn't been paying attention. 
Uh, a hot breath rushed against my neck and he moved my arms again. It was a smooth circular motion that was easy enough to imitate, though honestly he could have just shown me how to do it rather than grab me. Speak these words slowly. The arcane rolled from his tongue with ease but didn't enter my ears the same way. It took me a moment to realize they were the same use words used to command fire. The air around me chilled and I felt thickly in my skin when I finally got them right. With a little pride and wonder I watched as the water the edge uh, Magus had summoned crack, cracked into ice. I did it. I was shivering, both from cold and delight. Magic was just wonderful. Uh, the arch Magus let go of me, which caused a sharp chill to roll down my back. With the lesson over, he wordlessly moved to uh, gather more regions. Have you tried to teach the soldiers this? I would probably let the conversation die if I was not feeling so uh, in excited. I had some attempts at first, however, they did not show any interest. Really? Why not? It's so much fun. I couldn't wipe the big dumb smile away as I said that. The Archmagus stopped uh, and looked at me again. At first his face was blank, but then he smiled with me. You're the first to say that to me. Most find magic incomprehensible and nauseating. I can understand incomprehensible, but nauseating? Did casting magic make most people sick? Everyone has their attitude, but a few, but f so few will also have the patience. Does it make you sick to cast magic? The Archmag, uh, wait, that was me. Does it make you sick to cast magic? The Archmagus went back to his search. It did when I was young, as it does most. You grow out of this, however. He paused for a moment. It's quite rare, in fact, to encounter one who does not experience Arcane's illness. It's a good sign. It means you are blessed by all fear. If that's true, then I bet a lot of people uh, lie about getting sick. The young do. The archmagus laughed. But you can always see otherwise on their faces. I guess you would. Children aren't that good at hiding their feelings. They are not, no. I've never thought I'd been having such a casual conversation with the archmagus. Maybe you should stop calling him Rubus. <laughs> now was probably a good time to ask what was wrong. Are you really okay? The Archmagus stopped again, but this time he sighed and muttered some arcane words and sat down. The air caught him like a chair. I suppose knowing this will only help you in your strategies. He reclined a little and sat his head onto his hand. The Magus that attacked you, his name is Adamus. We apprentice together. Okay, so... He, they did look alike, but I don't think that's anything about. Oh no! Why did I save over that? Oh well. I think that. Yes, Alex. That's right. We all know each other. He sighed again. Let's just see. You were a princess once. We were all young ones. Just having. I'm just having a hard time in mentioning it. Ruby uh, chuckled softly. Okay, this is the good one. You know, Alex, you could be my apprentice. He sighed again. Adamus will likely take a deep delight in attacking us now that he knows I'm with you. He didn't leave on the best terms, I take it. I did not leave, he was the one that abandoned us. While the anger wasn't evident in his tired tone, it did flare up in his nostrils. Us, our master and myself. Oh, I see. Knowing that there was some bad blood between the two was useful, but I didn't really want to push the story that he obviously didn't want to tell. Interesting. I'm sorry, this isn't really my business. No, it isn't. However, I suppose I should be remiss for not speaking of it to you. You are, after all, responsible to keeping us alive. The Archmagus pr uh, pressed his feet on the ground and started walking again. I decided it would be better just to continue on in silence. The Archmagus seemed to agree. Alex, I'm going to ask something of you. Yes? Do you think I'm being too emotional? I recall a few times when I have opened up on this in the past, in the past, uh, have said I am behaving bullheaded by not talking this out, as they put it. I had a feeling he was indeed not used to talking it out. I feel it is unnecessary as well as, as I know well what happened and there is nothing to discuss. But some say maybe. Adamas and I should try to discuss it.
you may not know everything you think. I don't know why, but every time um, I f I know why. Every time Ruby's name is mentioned, I think of uh, Hagrid from Harry Potter. Ruby is Hagrid. <laughs> I feel really uncomfortable because <laughs> we're about to date Hagrid. <laughs> Maybe I'll give him a nickname or something. Is you okay if I called you Ruby? Doesn't that sound good? Ruby Boo? Yeah, you're so cute, Ruby Boo. Oh my god, he'd hate me in real life. <laughs> Ruby. He's Ruby. I'm so sorry, I just ruined everything for the creators. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say here. Poor little Ruby Boo. I don't know what... You may not know everything you think you do, it could be good to discuss it. Maybe you should consider it at least so at least he knows where you're coming from. Okay, I'll see the reactions. That's true, people do tend not to understand things. I do unless I lay it out to them simply. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, this is good. See, you get defensive sifts sometimes. You d maybe you don't even know uh, everything you could about it. Maybe it would be a good idea talk to talk with him. Never mind. So, do I gi give him what's true or what he wants to hear? Okay, I'm saving... And then I can go back and change it, uh, here. But I still believe this is the right one. This is the truth, he gets defensive. Ruby stopped off suddenly in a huff, clearly even though he'd asked for my advice, he didn't want to hear it. Let's speak with the soldiers to raise their morale. If recent events had shown me anything, it's that the moral of the troops was absolutely essential to keep high. Not to mention their trust in their leader, which was incredibly lacking right now. I considered fetching Nick and having him che check on the troops with me, but in his sour mood would probably prevent any kind of cheering up. Plus, I was the one giving orders, so really, uh, as long as they thought they were from Nick, it should be fine. These men were already checked chatting by the campfire when I arrived. A are we already the taking your or brother's place? Can't we just be like, eh, no, I actually don't want to do that, you weirdo? No? Okay. Okay then. I kind of don't want the responsibility, but okay then. I said I would do it. That's right, actually, I did say I would do it <laughs> in a previous episode. Hmm. That's because that Big commander dude can't do shit for himself. Alright, can you imagine all that meat though? Just going to waste out there? It's not really going to waste, I mean they're still using it. What will, uh, what with still be alive, being alive? You know what I miss? My wife's elk stew. Man, I kinda wish, uh, that scout hadn't said anything about the herd of elk. Now I'm getting hungry. The soldiers hadn't, report, hadn't reported a herd of elk as far as I knew, but then they were uh, really the only out there to spot the uh, enemy. My, s my sister was, had a killer recipe for dry invention. It lasts for months and just gets better as it gets older. Seriously guys, no way I want to go back to rations after thinking about elk. Bet that hard tag wouldn't be so bad soaked in vents and proof. Oh, is right, we should just go make us, uh, we're just going to make ourselves miserable. How far out is it? The men, uh, having not noticed I was there this whole time, jerked to watch me in surprise. I could hail! Um, not too far, I don't think. It was the last scout patrol that mentioned it. They probably moved by now. The last scout patrol was, the last scout patrol was pretty close to camp. I bet we could track the herd with a small enough group of men. Did it say there's a lot of them? Yes, loads. The most he'd ever seen. Perfect. Let's grab a couple of masked men, get bows for everyone and see if we can't, uh, if we can't find them. The soldiers were surprised at first, but then they grew excited. Yes, sir! They scrambled to their feet, and we had a cluster of men putting in no time at all. 
The hunt was exhilarating. It's been long since I'd gone with one, almost forgotten how fun and serene they could be. While no one forgot there was an enemy out there, the biggest focus went on finding those elks. Thankfully, the scout that had spotted them in the first place had just finished his shift and was more than happy to take the route back to the place. The elk were, of course, still not still there, but our scout was a talented tracker as well. We managed to find them long before we had to worry about nightfall. Seeing as we couldn't really mask or scent, we had to be careful about approaching the elk. Luckily, there were enough of us skilled at being silent and staying up wine not to spook them while uh, before we could get the first shots fired. We managed to take down a decent chunk of the herd before they scattered too far for us to continue after them. The men was absolutely joyful uh, when we gathered the kills and dragged them back to camp. Not an easy task given how heavy elks we'd taken down had been. The rest of the men were more than happy to see the hunting party come back with an elk in town. The meat would be e evenly distributed amongst the rations. It was a shame we wouldn't be able to probably tan the heights, but the horns could be useful to the clerics at any rate. Right. All in all, it was a very successful attempt at getting up the morale, and I felt pretty proud of myself. Now if I could just keep it through with the uh, hardships to come. Oh wow, I can do everything. Can I like literally do everything here? Okay, I think it was morning then was... Mm, yeah, I guess it's... Uh, this is what... I do a lot of my day. That's pretty cool. Uh, I feel Nick is gonna be real sad. So Nick... Nick's moods have been gradually plummeting since his promotion. While it wasn't too difficult to understand why, I couldn't help but wonder how I was going to cheer him up about it. His go-to go solution had been drinking, but he couldn't exactly do a lot of that right now. So, now that I w uh, not that I would have wanted him to, I didn't like seeing my brother drown himself so often. He wasn't the, command the commander's attendant with the men, which made him a little difficult to find. It should have been less of a surprise to find him in the middle killed tent with the prelate. It was strange, however, to see him sitting at a table uh, with an open bottle of wine and, wine and two empty cups. Not that I hadn't been expecting my brother to be drinking, but, be uh, but because he seemed to be doing it with the prelate. It, I wasn't exactly sure what to make of this, but the prelate seemed to make me just fine. Ah, Cordell. He waved me over and I approached. Have a drink with us, would we? Would you? He really shouldn't. I believe your brother can decide that for himself. After all, you were just worried that you may be worrying him, correct? Actually, I think I have other duties I need to go to. Thanks for the drink, Lucius. I do believe I still outrank you, Assistant Commander. Commander? Oh, right. Sorry, Prelate. Well, run along if you must. Your brother can accompany me instead. The Prelate uh, looked at me exp expectantly, like waiting for my reply. Sure, stay with Prelate. There's probably no harm in staying with the Prelate. He seemed to do a good job of cheering up my brother than I could have. Yes, well. Nick hurried out and quickly, and the prelate gestured for me to sit in his stead, so I did. The seat was still warm, which made me a little uncomfortable. You look disquieted. Don't feel like you need to stay just because I beckoned. It was not an order. I don't mind, prelate. No oh, good. The prelate then poured himself and I more wine. Are you adjusting well? I held up the filled cup under my nose and made a face at the scent. I thought it was wine, but it smelled more like sa soured root soup. Oh yes, I should have warned you. This is wine from my home. They make it with local roots and stuff. such. It's quite awful. I use it as an emergency disinfectant. I only drank it today because Nicholas appeared to be in dire need of soothing. The prelate laughed. Don't feel like you have to drink it. I can't. Uh, I can tell that you're doing well getting used to all this. Most men your age do. It's a resilient age. What would it be? Thirteen, fifteen, eighteen. The prelude laughed again, as though he thought I was joking. No, really. Really? Your voice hasn't even dropped yet. Uh, it did. This is as low as it got. It was a lie, but I was used to saying it. You should have that looked into. You may have severe I imbalance of hormones. I nodded. Maybe I should have lied about my age, too. Then, but then I was the son of the famous Sir Thomas Cordell. People could easily double-check on the age uh, thing with right resources. The prelate would have obviously had those. I suppose I shouldn't say much. I'm also quite girlish. The long hair does not help much, but I like it long. It makes my face look slender. That it does. I'm glad you see it. Long hair is awesome. 
like all my friends and my family and like pretty much everybody I know is like long hair and Anna, what is up with it? I'm just like, it's so like, of course, it's about the way the head is shaped and um, there, but most of the time it's just really cool to men, I think. I think it's pretty fucking attractive. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I nodded again. Dealing with a chatty uh, uh, prelate was something I was n not prepared for. Also, it keeps uh, the fading look of it. The prelate then leaned in to tell me a secret, so I leaned in close to hear it. The hair is what got me promoted to prelate, you know. What? The prelate le leaned back. It's true, they saw they say my skill, but it's a lie. They don't promote men to my position, you know. Uh, it's because my hair looks like the Althea. If she even, uh, if she even uh, looked like this, that is, did you know there are dozens of different descriptions of Althea? Uh, not that the differences from different churches around the world, but also in our own church. The older books you find that illustrate her, the more she changes. Really? I didn't know that. It's very inconsistent, but you don't want to hear me complain about faith. You're wondering about my hair, correct? It's hard to tell uh, when I have it up, but you saw it down in the bowl. You know why it looks strange. I honestly haven't considered it that much. It, uh, it isn't that difficult uh, to color hair these days. It is true, but I've not colored it at all. My hair is this way because of magic. That was interesting. It actually caught me off guard. Excuse me? When you use a lot of magic, it fades your hair for some reason. I asked Rubis about it, and he rambled on something about life energy and the shock changing hair color if you do it incorrectly. Of course, I was only doing it the way the church teaches you. I doubt they know they're doing it wrong. Anyway, the color began to return as I started doing less and less magic over the years. Divinely healing others is fine, but it made me incredibly ill. Arcane sickness, Rubis told me. Anyway, I stopped doing it uh, when I no longer had had to, and my original hair color began to grow back. It used to be much longer, but it broke off when uh, it was almost white. Such a shame, really. I thought about cutting it short into a nice style, but it makes uh, but to make it look like this again, I would need to start doing more magic, which does not appeal to me. Did I mention it got me promoted? Yes. They haven't said so, but I'm sure that it they did. They don't promote men to my position, not usually. <laughs> God, prelates of Althea are meant to personify the goddess herself. Apparently, according to most of the women and in the clergy, having a penis inc preludes you from having whispered them required for the position. <laughs> It was a novelty. I looked like Elfia and my family is nobility, so they pulled some strings as well. Everyone in my family has a title, you know. They collect them like rare coins or cats. I don't feel like I did an early position, really. I just uh, know I wouldn't have gotten it if I didn't look the way I do. Isn't that upsetting? Wouldn't wisdom dictate that all people can share the world of Elfia? Your body parts nor your gender should have nothing to do with it at all. It's your patience and intelligence and willingness to maintain a clean soul. He's very passionate about this. Um, also slightly drunk, I think. I nodded again. See, you agree with me. Anyone I say this to is not in the uh, clergy world would agree with me. But then this sort of discrimination is just one of the many issues I take with my own church. He took a slight pro pause. Am I boring you, Cardale? You look bored. No. Prelate, I'm just overwhelmed a little. This is an awful lot to take in at once. Rene, I don't think it's boring at all, actually. I think it's very interesting. I'm not supposed to do this, I apologize. I forget that not everyone is trained to listen to problems. It's okay. I'm actually sort of used to it. People came a lot, uh, came to me a lot at home to help them solve things. This is what I mean. You pr practice finding solutions, not listening. Uh, they are very different skills. I guess so. Well, I won't detain you longer. You likely have things to do as, uh, as it's drawing late. I nodded and got up. Thank you for listening to me. You're welcome. I offered the prelate a smile which was returned, but it was the same smile he had since I've met him. After that, I just walked out, unable to think of anything else to do or say. Great. Okay. Okay, I just realized that I'm pretty sure Nick is also 
an obtainable guy, which is a little weird since we literally refers to him as our brother. I know he's not a brother by blood, but still a little weird. <laughs> and I wonder what's our real hair color? It's a little sad we don't have red hair, red hair is so awesome, but it's okay, we don't, of course, but like, what's our hair color, I wonder? Anyway. It wasn't strange, uh, it wasn't all that strange for my brother to fetch me to go to the commander's tent. So I didn't think much of it as I followed him there as I walked in casually expected to get some disjointed rambling orders from the commander. I did not expect to see the King Kendrick there poring over a splayed uh, battle map, nor did I expect him to smile almost happily at the sight of me. Excellent, you may leave now, Assistant Commander. My brother bowed and left quickly. I wondered why if he'd been just as surprised to see the king or if I had been. Your name has been preceding you, Alex Cordell. Your father was quite loyal to my predecessor, uh, predecessor was he not? In fact, it's a lengthy tradition that one of the Cordell line faithfully serves the one who wears the crown uh, of the Ovrian, the uh, wears the Ovrian crown. I nodded, partly being dumbstruck, but also because he was right, despite having a Sulgarian mother and my father's family line was a deeply Orphrian one. It seemed like every one of them ended up becoming a knight or an ambassador or someone in some other important figure uh, to the acting Orphrian king. My father had been no exception, and it seemed that neither myself nor my brother would be. It's nice to, uh, that you are what, the one to hold the tradition. I slowly nodded all the progress I've been making in the more vocal and uh, being more vocal was shattered by the strength of this man's charisma. It was very easy to see how he managed to get King Farman's crown even though he had only loosely re was only loosely related to the man. You have a way with these men here. They've been looking uh, to, you, uh, to you for commands rather than their own commander. The king's attention has never diverted from the map, and yet I feel like he was scrutinizing me. It's quite the feat for one so young to get the respect of old boys and men alike. Even I did not reach wield such a force of personality at your age. He re <coughs> Excuse me. He then turned to face me, and my heart grew cold. It was the uh, was the man's eyes. There was something about that that deeply unnerved me. I think there's something seriously rotten in the uh, of Rian, um castle. Like, I just want to stay away. I'd really love just to go back and live. Like, if I weren't on Ruber's route, I would totally... And if it weren't, like, these soldiers, they're good lads and stuff. But, like, I really want to go. <laughs> um, All of the demonic stories about the man that hurt... Uh, back home rushed into my thoughts, and for a moment I believed them all to be true. Then he smiled, and sort of them, suddenly none of them felt like if they, were even, they could even be true. It was such a strange, strange sensation to both fear and implicitly, and implicitly trust the man. Are you hoping to rise to ranks here? I shook my head, though to be honest I hadn't put much thought into it. Then you fear you're going to be disappointed, because I see little way you could manage to avoid it. I imagine you will be outranking your bro own brother soon enough, though I don't imagine he would think ill, Ill of you for it. Command does not suit him. He made a much more competent cleric than assistant commander, should be told. The fact that the king knew so much about my brother, he even had an opinion on his abilities, was astounding to me. But then, Nick was a Cordell. Unlike myself, he'd been old enough to actually meet and remember the late King Farmond, and the rumors that King Kendrick had kept forcibly taken Farmond's crown were plentiful. So it did make some sense that King Kendrick might, uh, might uh, wish to keep up with his progress, just in case he proved to be more loyal to his father's king than his own. I'd probably be doing the same. The commander said that he was shy, but I expected at least some response to that. The king was not half heartedly. Uh, was now half-heartedly joking with me. It was absolutely surreal. Sorry, Your Highness. Don't be. I'm not familiar with your relationship to your brother. On the other surface, you appear to get along, but then so did I with my own brothers. I remembered hearing about the brother uh, Princess of Montercrest once or twice, 
they all found absolute lost towards the end. Was and was little wonder they were all dead, and it was little wonder they were all dead now. <laughs> Do you miss them? I found myself asking this without thinking, and regretted it the second uh, the words tumbled from my voice. The king seemed to take the question in a stride. Sometimes they were not good men, but they were family. To be honest, I'm more glad that a lot of them cannot grip my home in their garments and drain its blood any longer. Is that why you had a weird assault moon crest? The king looked a bit surprised and after not expecting me to be so well informed on politics. If not for my father's insistence that I learned, I probably wouldn't have been. But then, he would have just been shocked that I asked such a brazen question. I certainly was. It was almost as if, uh, the moment he suggested I should speak, I could no longer filter the words coming from my mouth. It's part of the reason, yes. You did not seem old enough to even remember the existence of Monocrest. My father felt it was important that I understand the larger workings of the world around me. I suppose he would. Hundreds of years of the war with the country despite it no longer truly existence would mar its way into a man's mind. I always wondered how he managed it. Managed it. Montecrest had a lot of ideals and traditions that wouldn't be blended with their own. I was lucky. My people were more loyal to me than my father, so when they were given a chance to wiggle free of his golden thumb, they took it happily, like moths to a flame, according to a handful of loyalists. The king chuckled at the last line. Still, it all worked out for the better, I feel. Hopefully history will not prove me wrong. I nodded, briefly fighting the uh, urge to comment on the matter further. I must say, this conversation has been quite refreshing. I can see now why you managed to guard not the trust of those around you. I hope you understand the confidence they have in you, in your ability to lead them and keep them safe. I nodded again. You seem unsure. I... I'm not accustomed to positions of authority, that's all. Then you may wish to grow accustomed, because you will have more trouble avoiding it than your brother has. His name sent him on his path to rank, but you have both it and the elusive wisdom to lead. I do? Thanks. It's a fire in your belly that creates a glowing beacon in your eyes, and then will always be looking to you for guidance. Thank you, your highness. I was not complimenting you, young Cordeo. The king let out a wistful, almost scratching sigh and turned his attention back to the map. I'm sure you have more in, uh, important things to do than humor an old world weary man. Yes, your highness. I winced after saying that, but the king just found it amusing. Then he waved me off and about boldly before uh, rushing from the tent. Nick was waiting for me outside. The pity was evident on his face. I probably looked as though I was about to die of fright. Despite my casual words, my casual words, my heart didn't feel as though I could resume pound, uh, as though it could resume pounding until I was away from that man's presence. Now that I, it, I was, I, it was doubling its efforts to make up for it. The king is intent. I nodded. I'd ask if you wanted a drink, but he looked out towards the uniform, uniform men bustling about the camp. I nodded again. My brother then patted me on the shoulder before gripping it firmly. Then he smiled at me. This is still good, right? You're just an aide, and the king wanted to meet you. I wasn't sure that was what, uh, too sure that, uh, it was, but I smiled and nodded anyway. My brother then ruffled my hair a bit, and we walked through the men, each of them smiling and, and some saluting as, uh, as we went past. We were drawn very close now to the goddess bridge, which spanned over the Spira River, and uh, surfed as the unofficial border between Austria and Silvard. Looking at a map uh, would show that the border lie much closer to the w village where we had battled the Lelution, but most people thought of uh, the bridge as the landmark of the border. Elpheus, uh might join Ning two lands together over an otherwise impossible obstacle. I was excited at the thought of seeing him again. Dude, you're going to war. <laughs> By the way, I'm sorry for the longer videos, but um, on this it's just so exciting, I don't want to stop. <laughs> and I should stop saying the word dude. <laughs> God. I'm just getting into the I'm a dude, you know. <laughs>
kind of mentality. I'm supposed to be a dude, you know. <laughs> the king's words uh, to me still sat uncomfortably on my shoulders as the army mobilized again. Did these men truly look to me? Was I strong or was it only my father's name that carried me? The very idea of it gave me a sense of foreboding. As before, I rode alongside my brother and the commander. Nick's eyes appeared a bit more tired than usual, but I couldn't tell whether it was from some some condition if he wanted to be left alone. Hey, hey Nick. Huh? His voice was off-puttingly dull, and he squinted as though he could not see me properly. He removed and cleaned his glasses, then continued riding ahead. He didn't seem to be in a very talkative mood. I needed something to distract myself from the thought of... Uh, responsibility, but I didn't fancy speaking with Commander Bruce. I looked around. The prince, as usual, was weaving around through various parts of the army, the, uh, the army chattering with troops and looking over their ranks. He seemed to be busy. Unlike the usual, uh, Prelate was walking separately from his subordinates and was speaking with no one. He appeared troubled. The arch, um, Magus was, oh god, he was talking to James again. Any interaction between the two of them had gone poorly enough thus far that I wasn't sure I wished to get involved. You're calling him Rufus now? Good. I don't know. <laughs> as long as, as much as I was not looking forward to witnessing another argument, I was sure no one else was either. Though I was still doubtful with, of the king's impression of me, I felt as though I should live up to at least some expectation of, and take charge where there was conflict. I was, I was sure what to make of the scene I found. Unsure. Well, it would appear there is simply one more... There is simply one more discipline that you are unskilled in. Hey, I know what I'm doing. I'm doing everything right. It would seem that it's erroneous. Don't you start that again. <laughs> Please don't. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> I was like, I love you, Rubens and all, and you're like, really lovely and stuff, but holy shit, I can't take those words. <laughs> For some reason, James was holding a badly wi uh, wilted potted plant and gesturing to Rubens. It was a strange image that almost was made almost comical by the difference in size between them. Look, I was just asking for some advice here. I'm coming to you for help. Why don't you let that stroke your ego a bit and tell me what to do? I honestly do not comprehend what it is you expect me to do. Your foolish venture has failed and there is no salvaging it. Like how you don't? Uh, you seem to know what everyone's thinking before you even think about it. You know what I'm asking and you know how to help me. If you intend to petition someone's help, you must be prepared to ask for it probably. James huffed and chewed on his lips while Rubus just waited, looking smug. This was going to escalate very soon. I needed to do something. Fuck no, I'm stepping in. Whoop! There. You two shouldn't be arguing in front of the troops. They both turned to look at me. Alright, Cordell, thank you. I hope you'll pursue it. this nuisance to stop accosting me. So, uh, so what? Now I'm attacking you just by talking to you? I didn't know you were so damn sensitive, Rubus. That would be Ar Archimagus to you. Stop it, both of you. What is this all about, James? All I want to do is to ask him for some advice, but apparently that's a huge insult in his culture. Even your insults are blunt and crude. They're a blunt and crude mechanic. There's no it's no surprise you aren't cut for something as delicate as horticulture. James looked like he was ready to smash the fuck into Rupert's face. I'm not sure if I would have blamed him, but it would have looked good, good to the other soldiers. I placed my hand on James' shoulder. James, just ask him what you want to ask. You don't need to make a scene out of it. He looked ready to argue this, but he had no, not, but he had the sense not to lash out at me. All I want for him is to show me how to use magic to fix my plan. Rubus flipped his turn. Magic's not something to be used so frivolously. From a toy, nor a cheat to be used whenever you fail. Bullshit, I think you use ma magic for dumb stuff all the time. You just show it off. Rubus looked briefly stunned, but composed himself swiftly. Using magic as an inconvenience uh, to expedite my pursuits is far from showing off. Oh god, I have to end the episode here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.